Morning, everybody. It's your boy Al. Happy Thursday. It is Thursday the 26th. I hope you all having a great day. If your morning's getting off to a great start, and mine is. Spent some time in the Word this morning. Um, and on my knees, um, praying for my family, my wife, myself, my son, and just everybody around me, my environment, and my situation. Um, I encourage you to do the same. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this critical race theory. Uh, I've been thinking about it, um, hearing people's thoughts, hearing what people have to say, doing a little bit of research, <coughs> and seeing that there are both sides of the spectrum. <coughs> you see a lot of people speaking up for critical race theory in schools or in general, in the workplace, and people speaking against it. Well, why is that? What is critical race theory exactly? And why is it drawing so much um, so much backlash or support? Or just why has it been so polarizing um, this year? And critical race theory initially started out um, in the 60s as a study of environments and systems that were set up. And, and it studied and dissected the racist structures within certain structures and how they existed, why they were set up, and what could be done to remove the racism from certain structures, like in, in school, um, in, the, in, in the workforce. And it studied going back to the beginning of these structures and all the steps that were taken um, and put in place in these structures to discriminate, particularly against black people uh, in America. And it traces all of these steps back, all of these prejudices back that are in these systems to the beginning and goes through all these systems and looks step by step at the things that were implemented that have allowed certain systems, owning homes, um, getting loans, school systems, careers, all of these, th uh, government, um, all, all, all of these things to be explored <clears throat> to their fundamental core. <clears throat> well, in the subject of black and white, of course, one of the most obvious things is all of this goes back. If you're going to go to the basics of the fundamentalism of it, it all obviously goes to one place, and that's slavery. And then you have to start from there and work through the fabric. And as we progressed, how systems were still put in place, that even though slavery had ended, how things were still put in place to prevent blacks from reaching certain levels or same levels um, as whites. When you think about it, when you explore it to the core, blacks and whites have been on <clears throat> this same continent together since the 1600s. That's a long time. And when you look at the gap, the disparity of economically where whites are and where blacks are, it seems like people who've been together on the same landmass for that long, for over 400 years, would be more even, even with slavery. But when you look at where whites are and where blacks are, you see the gap socially, economically, and questions are asked, particularly by millennials and post-millennials in this generation, how that gap happened. And what you have to do is you have to go back, critical race theory, what critical race theory does, it goes back and it traces all the steps to lead us to how whites are here and blacks are here. Now, here's why critical race theory is so important for me as a black man with a black son and a black family. Here's why critical race theory is important. It's important for the, the, the generations of now, the Generation Xers, the millennials, the post-millennials, Generation Y, all these generations. It's important for these generations to see how things are, to know that they were set up and that, that things are the way they are because of a series of unfortunate events that happened and take the steps to remove everything in those events from the systems as they stand today to ensure that what's happened in the past doesn't happen today and in the future. And knowing that, it makes you ask yourself, why are some people against critical race theory? If the purpose of critical race theory is to take the prejudices out of historical systems and ensure that the generations of today don't have those prejudices or where where they came from 
take them out. Don't have those prejudices. And going forward, don't move with those prejudices. Why would some people be against critical race theory? Well, there are a couple of things that um, are obvious. <clears throat> For one, the biggest group that has a problem with critical race theory, obviously, are, this, are some whites. Why? Because, like I said earlier, to trace some of these things that have, are in these systems set up in this country, you have to go back to slavery. And there are a lot of white people who don't like to deal with slavery. You have to deal with slavery. You have to deal with things like Jim Crow. You have to deal with things like the Ku Klux Klan. You have to deal with things like redlining. You have to deal with things like voter suppression. Um, you have to deal with things like the GI Bill. You have to deal with things like crack and the Contra War. You have to deal with all these things. And all these things point to one consistency, and that is white establishment going leaps and bounds, going the extra mile, to put steps in place to keep blacks from succeeding. And for certain white people, they don't want their children and their grandchildren hearing or being taught a narrative that whites historically have suppressed blacks. They don't want that because in their mind, a lot of that stuff's over. We're on an even playing field. We can get careers, we can get jobs, we can go to colleges, we can be millionaires and, and things like this. So for a lot of them, they feel like that stuff is in the past. But even though that stuff is in the past, there's still remnants, there's still gravy coming off of that bone, right, that was established going all the way back then. And some of the white establishment, particularly some older Gen Xers, because 1977, I'm, I'm near the end of the Generation X. But there's some at the beginning of Gen X and the end and the middle of the baby boomers who don't want critical race theory taught because it shines a light on things that they come from, things that they've experienced, things that they've lived. It sheds a light on all these things to the younger generation. And their fear is the younger generation of whites, their kids, and their grandkids will look back at them and say, y'all put up with this? Shame on y'all. And, and, and that is what a lot of whites don't want. They don't want their younger generations. They don't want the Generation X, the Generation Y. They don't want the, the millennials, the post-millennials. They don't want their kids. They don't want their grandchildren to hear about things that were done because it shines a light on the toxicity of the relationship of blacks and whites in years past. And there are certain whites who don't want that because they feel that it will cause young whites to walk around with a guilt of what their predecessors or their ancestors did. And for me as a black man, that's not what I want from critical race theory. I don't want young whites walking around in shame, walking around, hanging their heads, walking around, feeling that uh, <clears throat> they've done something wrong or, or feeling guilty. I, I don't, as a black man with a black son, I don't want that. What I do want is for them to be made aware of what happened and do everything in their power to ensure that it doesn't happen going forward. Critical race theory isn't sitting a bunch of white kids down and telling them all the evil things that whites did to blacks and then shaking their finger at them and saying, shame on you. Shame on you as a white because your predecessors and your ancestors did this. You should feel ashamed for your ancestors. You should feel ashamed for your grandma. You should feel ashamed for your grandpa because they participated in this. You should feel ashamed. Go home and, and feel ashamed and tell them how disappointed you are in them that they participated in this and that they lived in this and that they allowed it. Go back and tell them shame on them. That's not what critical race theory is. Critical race theory for me is just simply this. Teaching history as it happened. Teaching the hard truths about history as it happened why these things were happening in the in, in these in these particular points in history and what we can do to ensure that they don't happen again for me that's critical race theory what what's in these systems what was in these systems what was done what shouldn't have been done what should we do now to take them out what's currently being done what can we do in the future to take these systems down <clears throat> That's what critical race theory, in which it lies. <clears throat> Another reason why some people don't want to teach critical race theory, because some people just frankly like the systems as they are. They like to, to be able to live in neighborhoods where 
Um, <clears throat> you can discriminate against people because of the color of their skin. You, you, you can. I was I was watching uh, an episode of John Oliver, and he went through this detailed uh, monologue of how today there are still neighborhoods that in their bylaws say these homes are not to be sold <laughs> to blacks. That was the, he had a man standing there present day reading. Um, there was a story he was covering uh, uh, they, in the neighborhood where this was going on. And he, and they showed someone a white man standing there reading his current um, um, paperwork on his home in the neighborhood that he's in reading it aloud. And he gets down to the part where it says no black shall live in his neighborhood. And he was just, he was just aghast. He just took a deep breath. He couldn't believe in present day 2021 America that that's in his um, in his contract for him to be a homeowner. He talked about the fact that it was written that in certain developments wouldn't get money from the government or wouldn't get money if any homes at all were sold to blacks. Certain developments, certain when you drive through certain communities, know that certain communities that are elegant and as nice as they are only were that way because they had to make promises not to allow black people to live in those neighborhoods. It's things like that that need to be taught because one thing I need I need I need whites to know and see as a black man to not be okay with critical race theory. Um you're instilling a lot of trust. And I don't have a problem trusting people. But show yourself trustworthy. You're instilling a lot of trust as a black man and a black woman. You're instilling a lot of trust in your white brothers and sisters. For, for you to not teach critical race theory, you're instilling a lot of trust. You're instilling trust that you'll be honest about slavery. Instilling trust that you'll be honest about Jim Crow. You be, you, you, you're instilling a lot of trust that you'll be honest with your children and your grandchildren about what Andrew Johnson did when Abraham Lincoln started handing out 40 acres in a mule and got him assassinated and Andrew, Andrew and got assassinated and Andrew Johnson came and reneged on everything that Abraham Lincoln started. You, you, we will trust you to be honest on the great compromise that saw things get worse for blacks in the South when we had politicians and representatives in the great compromise that saw a president go in um, under some corrupt terms pulled all of the troops out of the South and left left room for what is known as the Jim Crow South and the Ku Klux and the rising of the Ku Klux Klan. We're trusting you to be honest with the fact that after World War One and World War II, um, when, when, when the government was pro providing through the GI Bill uh, um, ways for some of the troops to come home and own land, being, we have, we're trusting you that you'll be honest that some blacks, that uh, uh, most blacks were not allowed to participate in this, therefore could not own land. We're, we're trusting that you would tell the truth about the civil rights movement, about Selma. We're trusting that you would tell the truth uh, about how crack infected the black communities, that it was because America was funding a war and in funding that war bought kilos after kilos after kilos of cocaine and then forced the drug dealers of, in America to push it in the black communities. And because they were under such pressure to push it in black America and they couldn't move it fast enough, they came up with the process of crack to be able to move cocaine that was being pushed down their throat by government officials who were buying the drugs to fund an illegal war. We're trusting that you would tell um, your children that blacks have been discriminated against in housing and owning businesses and in universities. We're, we're trusting that you would tell the truth about police discrimination. We're trusting, uh, if you're telling us not to teach critical race theory, you're asking us to trust that when these subjects come up, you would tell the truth. We're trusting that when you drive through your rich white neighborhoods or, or rich middle-class neighborhood or an upscale neighborhood, and when you, you have to, for whatever reason, drive through the hood, that we're trusting that you'll be honest enough to tell your children and your grandchildren that the black communities don't look like this, um, or, or the black community looks like this because black people are lazy and black people are uh, trifling and savage. That's why the community looks like this because they tear up it and they tear down their own community. We're trusting that you tell your children the truth and your grandchildren the truth about why some of our communities look so destitute, why they look so run down, why they look so tore up. We're trusting that you wouldn't tell your children and your grandchildren our neighborhoods look like this because we're so wonderful and prosperous. Their neighborhoods look like this because they're so lazy and trifling. 
We're trusting that you would tell the truth about what happened to our communities, about redlining. We're trusting that you would tell. So if you if you want us not to teach critical race theory, we're trusting that when these conversations come up, when you're driving with your twenty, with your with your with your, with your twelve or thirteen year old, and they're asking you, Grandma, why do the black communities always look so run down, and our communities, which are predominantly white, look so nice? Which I'm trusting that you won't give them that stereotypical answer that black people are lazy and slothful and don't want to clean up their own communities and don't want to own businesses in their own communities. We're trusting that you would tell them the truth and tell them, well, grandson, well, granddaughter. Let me tell you, there's some there's some things that have happened that have left black communities in these conditions. So to not teach critical race theory, you're, you're, you're asking us to trust you. <clears throat> We're telling your kids and grandkids a lot. <clears throat> so for me, critical race theory, and, and I hear a lot of black people saying, well, it, it drives it, it drives a wedge between in a world where we want black and white kids to live together. It drives a wedge between um blacks and white black and white kids no it doesn't what drives a kid a wedge between black and white kids <clears throat> are people who stand up against it because of what they think it is people who stand up and before their city councils and speak against critical race theory because they think that it's teaching whites to be guilty for what they did to blacks or teaching white kids to be guilty and black kids to hate white kids that's not what it's supposed to do that's not what it is and you only fear that because you keep you you fear that that's what's going to happen because that's what you think it is and you don't know what you're talking about that's not what critical race theory is critical race theory isn't making one race feel guilty about what they did to another critical race theory is exploring the systems of racism that have been established throughout all the different ways of living in this country how they got there and getting them out. To do that, you have to talk history. Sometimes history lessons are tough lessons. They're tough things that need to be brought out. I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor. Reading the scripture, there's some tough things that have to be brought out. There's some tough questions that I ask. There's some tough answers that I have to give. But you don't not give them or not discuss them because they're tough. You don't not work through these things because they're tough. You have to work through them. So for me, critical race theory is important in relationship building for the future because it teaches us the things that the prejudice, it, it helps us identify the prejudice that are in the systems and take them out. The only way you're against critical race theory is number one, if you like the systems as they are. Number two, you're uneducated about what it is and you think it's something that's going to divide our children and our children's children. And number three, the only reason why you're against critical race theory is because you're okay with racism. You're okay with it as it is. You're okay with telling your own story. You're okay with, we already see in certain school systems how they're changing the narrative of what slavery was, changing, uh, uh, talking, not talking about the Ku Klux Klan. We're leaving a lot of that stuff out because while some people are against critical race theory, they're not against completely whitewashing or changing history altogether. And that's what some people want to do. That's what certain segments, sectors, school systems <clears throat> and institutions want to do. Because let's be clear, <clears throat> as much color that has progressed in this country, still predominantly white at the top. Go and look at Forbes, richest men. All Americans are still white men. Right? I'm not saying that they're all racist because I wouldn't dare do that. I wouldn't just call somebody racist because it's a hard thing to put on someone. But when you're in a society that's where the richest men or white men, you have to ensure going forward that systems aren't in place where only people that look like that will end up at the top of that list. <clears throat> because if we've been on this landmass called the United States of America for 400 years, then when I look at the 100 richest men in the world, or, in, or when I look at the 20 richest men in America, there should be some color on that list. There should be some people on that list that look like me. But we know that there have been certain systems set up in place to keep that from happening. 
And since we know there have certain, been certain systems put in place to keep that from happening, let's tear the systems down or take out of the systems what have been in those systems to keep people like myself down. We don't have to necessarily tear complete tear systems down. We don't have to destroy the United States of America. We don't have to tear down buildings and break down systems, but we do have to search those systems out and take the cancers out of those systems that have driven wedges. Because what drives wedges between black and white people aren't critical isn't critical race theory. What drives wedges between um, black and white people is active racism. Not giving black people loans and giving it to white people. Not giving black people houses and giving it to white people. Not allowing black people access when you're allowing white people access. That's what drives wedges. That that's what not not critical race theory. That's not meant to make us divided. And yeah, I know that there are some black people who progressed. <clears throat> there are a lot of black people who progress, and a lot of black people who are moving moving on. There are a lot of black people who are doing great things. But just because there are black people that <clears throat> are doing great things do not mean we still don't doesn't mean we don't still need to explore certain things in the system that need to be changed. So I'm for critical race theory as it was fundamentally meant to be. <clears throat> I'm for critical race theory in school because our kids need to know the unfortunate things that happen, talk about it, get over it work through it, tear down stereotypes about one another, black kids not believing all white kids are racist, white kids not believing all black people are lazy and, and this and that, and want to be just athletes and rappers. Not all white people are against black people. Critical race theory starts those kind of conversations. We need it on our jobs, we need it in our jobs for the sake of understanding and knowing when somebody's getting overlooked simply because of the color of their skin. What are the, some of the signs? What are some of the symptoms to know that this is going in a racist direction? Historically, what has been done in certain systems and certain companies, corporations to keep people of color from progressing? Do we have any of those things in our company? Okay, since we've identified some of those practices that were here back then, that are, some of them are still here now, let's remove them from our system so we can ensure everyone has a fair chance. <clears throat> now, if, if you're not for that, then I don't know what, what to tell you. If you're not for a system that allows people to have a fair chance, I don't know what to tell you. So, I'm a pro-critical race theory guy. Um, I'm probably always gonna be, as long as it is, is, is effective. Like, again, what I'm, not, now what I'm not for is race warring and making racists hate one another and jealous and envious and and despise and making people feel guilty that's not what it is and people who believe that need to change and need to do your research that's not what critical race theory is i need all of these kids to know the things that have happened and to make a change that's the intent of critical race theory that they'd be better than we our parents and our grandparents are don't forget to get to hit like don't forget to click subscribe I'll be making more videos later. We're going to talk about some things that I know people want to talk about. We're going to talk about this Curry Richardson. We're going to talk about uh, relationships. Because I know I have some people who I like talking relationships with. So we'll get back with you guys later. Y'all have a good day. Don't let nothing tear you down. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Be blessed. Be prosperous. Peace.